Are you going to be there by chance? I am going to be there. It's, uh, I'll get started right away here, guys, and, and just mention to okay. you. Uh, All right. I have seen probably nearly every band of the era in which you guys first became famous. For whatever reason, Striper, the real world kept getting in my way. I, I have had Striper tickets, and, and something has delayed me from, from getting there. So I'm excited it's finally happening. Fill me in. What have I been missing? Well, man, uh, it's good that you're finally catching us uh, because, you know, we're getting to that point where we've been doing this for almost 40 years. So you don't, you don't want to wait too much longer. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, the, it's like the, the, the grand uncle that you haven't seen and, you know, you, you never met before. Yeah. <laughs> but the fun grand uncle who's the life of the party. So I'm sure. glad you're making it, man. And hopefully it's a good show and a good turnout and you have a good time and you walk away wanting to see us again. That would be amazing. I have no doubt it's, it's going to be great. And I'm sure it's not going to be like what I would have seen in the 80s. What do you guys think is the, the biggest difference now? To No spandex. We have, we have more energy. We have way more energy now. A <laughs> hundred times. Uh, you know what? Uh, Think about Striper in all seriousness. We joke a lot. I'm sure you can tell. Uh, we we still got some fuel in the tank. I think when you see us, uh, you know, you'll you'll hear and see and witness a, a rock show, and uh, we put a lot into it, a lot of time and effort. But we always do everything that we do, and hopefully that shows. Uh, and it pays off because it's, it's a lot of work, you know, we're rehearsing yes. now and working out stuff instead of just going like a lot of bands, you could just show up and play and hope for the best mistakes and all. We don't ever take that approach. Uh, never have. So, you know, I think it's going to be a great show, man. So are you saying there's not going to be any mistakes? Well, there may be mistakes. <laughs> there better not. There <laughs> always are. So you can say what you want about, um, clean living, but I mean, you guys look good, you, you sound good. Um, I know there have been, uh, there were health issues at least for a couple of you but between putting the last album together and getting out there. How's everybody doing? I know Oz had something going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're doing a lot better. I mean, we're, we're in a, a better place, obviously, than when that was happening. Uh, it would come a long way, uh, but I mean, those, those issues are still there and it's just part of getting older and you deal with it and you, you learn how to readjust and figure out a way around it, you know, and the obstacles and handicaps. I mean, as, as we get older, everybody has issues, uh, things that fail, things that happen and you just kind of deal with it or you don't, you could go in a room and never come out again and you, you, you can't live like that. I'm going to do that when I get home. <laughs> um and touring with vixen or vixen's opening the show i don't know how many you're necessarily doing together um i'm hoping we're going to interview them later in the week um and i'm gonna if i do I have them say some nice things about you guys but tell me say a couple of nice things about vixen if you can oh my gosh there's so many nice things to say about vixen they're great <laughs> yeah man great band and um They've, they've had their trials and tribulations yes. and gone through a lot and uh, they're still going, man. And that's what I, what I meant earlier. Like you got to just kind of rise above and they have, uh, they've been so resilient and pushed through and it's really amazing to see. And it, it it's uh, inspiring to see that. Well, like, you know, like, I mean, they look great too. I mean, look at, look at uh, Roxy. She, she looks great. I mean, she still looks really young and, vibrant and yeah my cat roxy she's an almost 19 years old crazy <laughs> amazing man no i'm telling you no she's, she really she's, is my cat really is Roxy. yeah i know <laughs> the cast named roxy then probably uh i don't know maybe roxy petrucci uh inspired lena to name her that i don't know anyway, <laughs> yeah they're great um oh my gosh good good band and it's always an honor to play with vixen and, and any other band from the, from that era it, it, they're our buddies and when we run into them and we hang out with them for a brief moment in time it's it's we always walk away like that was great that was fun yeah. it's good to see them they, they always sound awesome so yeah. we're really happy to play with them forgive my phone that was my van hillen ringtone going off as we were <laughs> we were speaking oh van halen we hate van halen man 
No, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't even joke about that one. It's, it's funny you mention that because one thing I was going to bring up to you guys is one of my favorite Striper albums is the covering. I feel like if I had talents and knew you guys, I could be in a band with you guys. That collection of songs was like my my Columbia Record and Tape Club first, you know, thirteen for a penny. <laughs> That's awesome. I love how you say if you had talent. That's funny, man. <laughs> I, I know. You know believe me, I knew for a second I could not hang with you guys. That was an album that we just it, we were with Big Three at the time, and and uh, we had to fulfill uh, an agreement. And I just kind of threw that idea out. Let's do a cover album. And they liked it. They liked the idea. So we went in and uh, those are all bands and songs that we grew up on and listened to and helped shape us, uh, who we are and what we do. And it was really fun making those covers. And I hope we did, did those covers justice. And we tried to respect the songs and the bands. And I hope we did that. For sure. Well, I mean, you hit the notes on On Fire, which I don't know that anybody hmm. since 78. Well, you know, um, that's a tough song our, to sing, man. Our version of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's not easy. That's not an easy song. And I'm, I'm, we're all huge Van Halen fans, and uh, probably more so Oz, Oz and Rob and I. But I still think Rob, and you got to come clean right now, I still think Rob got the yellow and black thing from, uh, from Van Halen. From the Bumblebee guitar. From the guitar, well, maybe. What do you think? I think I always loved that guitar. I thought it was beautiful. Did they ever call you on it? What's that? Did they ever call you out on it? No. no. I mean, no. We I weren't mean, the, the first man to use yellow and black stripes. We just are the first man to use them in the way we did. Right. Head to toe. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. But you know what, man? Those guys were awesome. And, uh, uh, I've gone on record saying that David Lee, I prefer Van Halen with David Lee. You know, that's my favorite version of Van Halen. Uh, and, I, you know, there's something about David Lee that was just uh, really, really cool. He had a, an energy to him uh, as a front man that was really amazing. And uh, I miss those days. Great days. When you guys tour, you, you tend to tour with Vixen or bands of, you know, I keep referring to the era in which you came up. What's your relationship like in general with bands of that era? Did you guys used to be rivals and then over the years kind of become friends and, and touring partners? Or, or was it always good? What do you think? Do you I think? mean, I've never really looked at other bands as rivals. I mean, I've always hoped to look at them as friends. I mean, I think there's a, a healthy competition. Like if I, I remember back in the day, it was you... We were playing with Rat and, you know, uh, all these bands in L.A. And I remember we would go and rehearse and work hard to try to keep up with Rat. Well, sure. And, you know, like this healthy competition. Yeah, but right. that, it, in terms of being rivals, that's as far as it went. Yeah, there was never any negative connotations, you know. No. And Perry, you came from one of these bands as well. So you guys knew of each other for a bit before. Yeah, he's talking to you. I he came from, yeah, yeah. Oh, I did come from one of those bands, didn't I? <laughs> well, how, how did you guys find each other? How, how did yeah, Perry we, come to be with you? Well, we met, we, we, uh, the band that CJ and I were in before Firehouse, it was a band called Max Warrior. We got to open for Striper in 85 in Charlotte. That was the first time I'd met these guys. And um, I was always a really big fan uh, I had everything I had was yellow and black back in the day. Well, it still is. Yeah, before us, he was wearing yellow and black. Yeah, so it kind of fit. And uh, but I loved the band, and I was uh, I followed them for you know all through the eighties and nineties, and uh, just loved them. And when I got a chance to be in this band, I freaked out, and uh, I'm very happy now. So. Yeah, and it's it's interesting how it came to be because, uh, you know, we remember when Perry shares all these stories, it's like, oh, gosh, yeah, 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 we remember that. But the time in between, we had went, gone our separate ways and it didn't really keep up or stay in touch or know Perry yeah. for the most part. He didn't know us. And then our manager, Dave, mentioned his name and it's like, oh, gosh, yeah, that's perfect. And we flew Perry in and the rest is history, as they say. It worked out beautifully. If you don't mind, I want to talk about your faith a little bit. I almost hate to bring it up because I feel like, well, I don't ask other bands about their faith. Uh, but you've made it such a part of your music and, and such a part of your lifestyles. 
Um, writing music now as Christians, do you come at it from a different perspective than you did as young men writing about your faith? Uh, well, real quick, briefly for me, and then these guys can elaborate. I, I as a writer, I, um, in the old days, I would write more from my head. And now I write more from the book. Okay. So I really go to the Bible a lot when I write now, like pretty much for every song and, and find scriptures to back up what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say. I didn't do that as much in the old days. Um, it was more just from the heart and head. Now it's from the heart as well, but it, it, not so much from the head, but more from the book and trying to really make it all make sense uh, biblically mm -hmm. speaking. I think there's something to be said about uh, about the Christian walk and, and the faith that you live out. I mean, there's so many things to be written about in that sense, too. So I think there's a lot of that going on with some of our lyrics that I, at least what I can see. A lot of the lyrics lately are right, more what's to come, mm -hmm. you know, Re revelation, marching into battle. Uh, you know, a lot of times taken right out of Revelation and the things that the Bible speaks of that's coming, you know, and it's kind of, it's kind of fitting for metal. It's really cool. It works really well, you know. Yeah, I think I heard an interview with you guys once where you said, uh, what, what could be more metal than the Bible? When, when yeah. People... <laughs> yeah, people say that, you know, a lot of times people say that we're wimpy and we're a bunch of, you know, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, but then, you know, like, uh, you know, chopping a giant's head off, you know, that's. <laughs> well, I, I was going to, I was going to just say, I mean, it, it Bible, the, 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 the funny thing is people think Satan is as metal as it gets, but see, God created the devil. He created Lucifer. And it's like, he's the creator. Lucifer, Satan is the creation, and it just makes no sense. It's like, why would you worship a creation where you can worship the creator? And it's very odd to me. Uh, they think that Satan's cool, and he's he rules, you know, rules music and rules metal, and I guess to a degree he does. I guess, yeah. But, you know, he's not metal. I mean, what's, what's more rebellious than uh, not being like any other band and yeah. taking a stand for Christ? That's as rebellious as it gets, pretty much, if you think about it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's hard for me to link you guys with other bands. I link you with bands from the era, and I think of other Christian bands, but you fit this hole in between them. That I really have never been able to link you with anybody else, to be honest. How do you think um, the music business, the people in the business, perceive you now as opposed to they did then when it comes to uh, singing about your faith? Well, I just I hope I hope a few people have mellowed out. I think they have, you know. Uh, I think pe people have relaxed. I, th I think they had the wrong idea in the beginning. They were a little way too afraid of it. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, I was going to say something different than that. I was going to say everybody's forgotten us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, but not quite. Well, you don't think everyone's forgotten us? <laughs> no, they haven't. Honest, honestly, it seems like there's still a, a pushback. For <laughs> sure. There always seems to be because of what we believe in. And, and no one wants to really have to face what it means to, to believe that there's a real God because they, they want to do their own thing. So the, the, the normal world, whether it's the music world or whatever in the world, you really don't want that a lot of people just don't want that in their life because it, it they feel like it's controlling and actually it's freeing it frees you it's a little hard to understand until you get into it christianity is never going to be popular right it's just uh you know from day one to to the very end well to, to in that world it, it'll it'll never be popular because in the, in the people who are have faith it's popular well yeah that's so. that's what i mean though it's it's never going to be popular to in in the world's eyes, you know, people that don't have faith in this case, a lot of people don't. Now, a lot of people have faith in other gods and other religions and, and whatnot, but, you know, we believe there's one God, and, and uh, that's, a, that's a weird thing to say in 2023. 
you get people up in arms real quick when you make a, a comment or a statement like that. But um, you know, everyone believes what they want to believe, and we're very we're very set in our faith and, and what the Bible says. I think I think for me the important thing to remember is that that there that there is a, a savior who is Jesus, and he saves us from eternal death. Uh, so that's kind of the message. You know? I wonder too if you guys have any kind of advantage having been at it as long as you have, and people, you know, Striper is known for that, than an artist who uh, maybe becomes born again or, or discovers religion later in life and tries to change direction. Um, Lou Graham is from here. Um, yes. Hero. I interviewed him once and he mentioned uh, his frustration and really heartbreak that he could not get his Christian music to take off with anybody. The ministry yeah, yeah. I've talked to talk to, I talked to Lou about that, and he is and was frustrated trying to uh, have people take his Christian music seriously. You know, they they remember him as a singer for Foreigner and sure. all those amazing songs that are timeless, right? Uh, but he wants to be taken serious as a believer, and he is a believer. He's a man of faith, which is really awesome. Uh, but yeah, man, it's tough. It's not easy. But Striper's been doing it for almost 40 years. So uh, I think we've certainly made our pl uh, place in this world, as Michael W. Smith once said. Uh, we've kind of got, we've got, uh, I'm trying to figure out the right way to say this, but we've kind of got it down, you know, in terms of what we're doing and mm -hmm. how we do it. Uh, and we know what to do. There's, there's no question with every album we make, every tour we do, there's no question we know what we're doing and what we're here to do and what our calling is. So. Uh, it makes it a little easier, I guess. I don't know. That's a good question, though. There's still a lot of uh, non-religious fans in the audience, too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. From, uh, you know, atheists and Satanists and Buddhists. We go to Japan. And, I mean, we, we travel the world. And we went to Indonesia, Jakarta. We're tossing out Bibles. And, and you know, we're playing in front of... The Bur crowd primarily of burkas. Muslims. <laughs> Bur yeah. Girls wearing burkas and they're yeah. doing this. Crazy. <laughs> really, really amazing. And we're standing there going, wow, this is this is once in a lifetime opportunity here. Yeah, you still toss the Bibles out to the crowd then. Oh yeah. Do people react oh, to them like they do, you know, guitar picks? Do, do they go nuts for them or is the Bible's more than anything? Yeah. That's what people want. And, um, and maybe they see it as more of a collectible. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever the case, it's uh, it's an important part of what we do. Well, and people do read them. Yeah, of course. Over the years, people have read them and told us that it changed their lives. So that's awesome. You know? They do. And we meet uh, lots of people who don't share our faith, who have the Bibles and are very proud to have those Bibles. You know? You know, John 5, I, I tell the story, but it just kind of blew my mind. Uh, he plays for Motley now, obviously. He told me how he had a striper Bible, and, you know, uh, uh, he saw his play back in the day. You know, people like that that you never expect to say that, or you, you don't expect to hear that from someone like John 5. Or, and it's, it's always kind of mind-blowing to me in a great way. And Michael, I was excited to see uh, just news recently about another uh, Sweet Lynch album. Yes. Love what I've heard so far from those. George just played uh, last month the same venue you guys are going to be at Saturday. And it was on fire, as I'm sure you know. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. Well, George is the legendary guitar player, you know. It's, it's fun playing with him. It really is. And he's a, he's a funny guy, too. An interesting guy in, in a great way. He's got a, a very unique sense of humor, and he keeps me laughing, that's for sure. That's I'll let you go get here, guys. Well, this has been plenty. Anything I forgot to ask you about? No, I think you're good, bro. <laughs> you know, I was going to mention, Oz, I did see you once, though. I didn't see Striper. Um, but in Vegas, I caught you with uh, Alice Cooper's band. I was doing a warm-up oh, yeah. uh, club yeah. show the night before. Uh, it was yeah, a they, ton the, of fun. The whole, the whole band was there uh, before their show, the night before, playing yep. at the SMS uh, casino and uh, I got invited to come down and I went there and sure enough I got up and jammed some stones. With yeah them. it was great. I uh, was I literally was seeing The Who that night. I was oh, in wow. an elevator on my way to see The Who 
was looking, just gotcha. looking at Twitter and saw something about Alice's band. And a fan said to me, you know, Alice's band is playing out. So I literally saw the Who, got in my car, raced to see you guys and caught it in time. And uh, yeah, they were kind nice. of to say hi afterwards as well. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm.